So let's look at KMAPS. Using KMAPS is the easiest way to convert any truth table into a simplified Boolean expression directly. Let's take an example. So traditionally, we look at, for example, in a table like this, all the results, all the outputs that were ones, and write the combinations for the inputs that gave us this. So for A0, B0, C0, we have X is equal to 1, so we'll write that. We have the same for the third row, um, in which we have A0, B, C0. We have the next would be A0, B dot C and A B C naught plus A naught B naught C naught. Now you realize this is a pretty lengthy way of doing an expression, and then after this, we'll have to even simplify it. So instead of this, we could simply use K maps to solve this. Let's look at how we do that. So let's make a table first uh, where we club all our inputs and outputs together. So this is how you do that on. One row, you have A, then B, C, okay. So A could either have the value of zero or one, right? Combinations of B and C could be zero, 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 one, 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 and one, zero. Okay, so now let's check. For A, zero, and B, C, zero, zero, the output is one. So we'd put one in the center over here. Um, for a is equal to 1 and bc0 which is this one we'd have 0 so we'll put that down as 0 for a0 and bc01 a0 bc01 this one we'd have 0 so again we'll have a 0 over here for a1 and bc01 A1 and B, C, 0, 1, that'll be a 0, right? Yeah, and for A0 and B, C, 1, 1, A0, B, C, 1, 1, which is this one, we'll have 1. The output is 1 of X, so we'll just note it down as 1. For A1 and B, C, 1, 1 over here, all of them are 1s, our output will be 1. For A0 and B, C, 1, 0, a0 0 and bc10 our outputs 1 so let's note down 1 once again a1 and bc10 a1 bc10 it's 1 so this is basically how a kmap table looks like let's solve it now now i want you to note something really important before we go to solve it kmap tables wrap around so imagine folding a tin foil around this cylinder one end of it will touch the other end. Similarly, one end of the KMAP table will touch the other end. Now, with this in mind, let's actually solve it. So, I've copied our KMAP table over here. So, we think about the ones over here, specifically those that come together in even numbers. I'll be marking with blue one of the most obvious combinations. These four ones form a box of even numbers because there are four ones, right? Since we kept in mind that KMAP tables actually go around the cylinder that they wrap around, we will also have another combination. Let me mark this combination. This will be another combination of even numbers of ones, since there are two ones over here. These are the two possible correct combinations for this KMAP. But let's look at some incorrect combinations for the same KMAP. If we were to, for example, select this combination, that would be incorrect because we are selecting three ones and we need an even number an even uh, combination of ones now let's look at one other incorrect combination so if you notice we could have selected this right it's still even number well we cannot do that because we need to select the largest box the largest rectangle the largest square we can draw around the ones so that's the reason the blue square over there is correct and this is not okay on solving it so this part is really the simplest part about uh, k maps first let's look at the a part right for a's do we have the value of a changing in the blue box in the blue box it does go from zero to one okay so because it's zero over here both of these places and it's one over here 
Well, let's look at B. Does the value of B change for the blue box? No, it doesn't change because it stays 1 and 1. In the blue box, that is constant. Does the value of C change? Yeah, that, that does change. So, in this case, we retain the value of B because that's the only one of the inputs A, B, and C that remains constant. Okay, so let me just put B down over here because we are retaining that part from the inputs. And it'll be B and not B naught. So it's not going to be B naught because the value of B is one. If it were to be zero, then we'd have it as B naught. So let's look at the green box now. So here in the green box, the value of A does not change. It stays zero. It's zero over here and it's zero over here. The value of B, yeah, the value of B does change because it goes from zero to one. Okay, so we'll skip on that. Now the value of C, uh, the value of C is constant because it's zero in this case and it's zero over here as well. So for the green box, we're retaining versions of A and C. Uh, but now you'll notice that A is zero and C is also zero. So we're retaining the um, zero, zero versions of A and C. So we'll put it down as B plus A naught dot C naught. And this is our simplified, uh, let me just pen it down. This is our simplified B plus A naught C naught. This is our simplified expression for the truth table. You might traditionally write it as um, starting with A, so it might go like A naught C naught plus B, but it doesn't really make a difference. All right, now let's look at another example and let's do this a little more quickly. Right, so first we have a box of six ones. Let's mark that. Next, um, we have one wrapping around. We cannot have three, we'll have two, right? So I'll mark these two. There are no other possible combinations. So let's look at the blue box first and the input for bl the blue box for A. The values, they do change. In fact, they go from zero to one. And for B as well, they grow from 0 to 1, so the values do change. So let's look at input C now. It goes from 1 to 1, so that's not a change. So we'll note that down. Even D changes, so we'll just skip that. Now let's look at the green box. So for the green box, the inputs A and B, they'll remain the same because they're in the same row, right? So we'll have A0, B0. For C, C indeed will change. Goes from 1 to 0, so we'll not consider that. D, now if we see D will not change, it stays 0. So let's just put that down as D0. Another thing that we forgot to include, guys, is this um, square, right? So we need to include this as well since our table wraps around. Here you'll see guys that the value of A does change. It goes from zero to one. Um, the value of B doesn't change. It stays from zero to zero. So we'll add that as B naught. And the value of C is constant. That's zero as well. The value of D is also constant. So that's C naught, D naught. So yes, guys, this is how our final squares will look like. And our final equation, we will write that down as x is equal to a dot b dot d complement plus b dot c dot d complement plus c. Alright guys, that's it for this video and see you in the next one.